All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is Randy Dean. Uh, many of you know me as the email sanity expert. Uh, and you can find out more about my work at my website, randalldean.com. But this is sort of a fun little episode. On this one, I'm actually going to be the two hour traveler again. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. And uh, what's great about this is I'm actually going to be featuring my three and a half day trip last summer to Alaska. Uh, I know many of us are in the stay-at-home orders because of the coronavirus as I'm producing this right now, and uh, I just thought it was time to put together something that um, can get us all thinking about those days when we can get back out and traveling and seeing the world again. I know I personally cannot wait. Uh, so uh, let's, let's dive into this, and hey, there I am. Hi, everybody, and let me show you one of the things that was pretty cool about this trip to Alaska, too. I saw six moose. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the animals and things that I saw while I was on the trip too. Now, while I was on this trip, I will tell you that I spent time, uh, obviously I flew in and out of Anchorage. I spent a day down in Whittier, Alaska, which is where you can actually go on the glacier cruise, as you can see up here in the background. And then I also went from Anchorage up to Denali and uh, did the bus tour through the national park. Um, and I did all of this in three and a half days. So what I want to do is uh, actually take you on a little bit of a slideshow tour. I'm going to be the geeky dad that does the slideshows of his trips, but I'm going to bring this in and make it a YouTube video too. So let's talk a little bit about this. As you can see, here's Alaska. And uh, I flew into Anchorage, which is right here. And as you can see, uh, the first full day we went into Whittier. Um, what I want to do is I want to jump out to my Google Photos, and what I'm going to do is actually show you both uh, some of the pictures from the flight coming into Anchorage uh, the very first night. I flew in in late afternoon, evening, right before sunset, and so basically that was a long day. Uh, it took about eight hours, I think, to get there from here in my home base in Michigan, and um, so what we did is we flew in. Uh, I got grabbed some pictures of the mountains as I was flying into Anchorage. And then what I want to do is show you Whittier. I want to share a little bit about the day heading down to Whittier because um, one of the interesting things is, as you can see, uh, this is called the Seward Highway. It's Highway 1 in Alaska. It goes by uh, the pretty famous Alaska Resort. And then what happens is you come down here. If you keep going this way, you'll go down to Seward. But you'll see there's this little side road that takes you over to Whittier. And when I go into the slideshow, I want to tell you one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's one of very few uh, simultaneous use car and train tunnels in the world. And so you're going to see a picture of this when I'm going through. Uh, what was interesting about it is it's a one lane road. So basically the way it works is they let the cars go through to the east and then they stop it, turn around, let the cars go through to the west. Unless of course there's a train coming uh, because the train, you can actually take the train from Anchorage all the way down to Whittier too. I got a rental car instead because I wanted to adventure a little bit more. But um, what was interesting is that then you just sort of sit there and wait for the train to come through before you can go through. Uh, so all of this is going to be the first full day. So let's go take a look at what we have here. And uh, so I'm not in the way. I'm going to turn this off. And I think I'm going to even try turning on a little bit of music over here. Let's try this.
Now, one thing I have to tell you, a couple things here. One, notice how hazy some of these pictures are. I went, um, I landed in Anchorage on June 30th. Um, I started uh, checking things out on July 1st. Um, if you remember, two things were happening. One, they were having record high temperatures. The first two days I was there, it was almost 90 degrees, which was almost unheard of. The second thing that was sort of fascinating is that because of the high temperatures and the long dry spell, off to the west, there was a ton of forest fires. And um, what was happening was all the smoke was coming over toward Anchorage and it was also going over toward um, where I was in Whittier. Now, as you can see, what I did is I uh, got on one of the glacier cruises here. So what you're about to see is more of the glacier cruise uh, information um, and, and part of the trip. So uh, it, was, it was absolutely amazing. Now notice one, we're on inside um, waterways. Uh, so they were connected to the ocean, so it was salt water, but you can see the, the waterways were fairly calm, so it wasn't too bad at all. Uh, the other thing that was sort of interesting about the trip was that um, not only were the waterways fairly calm, but it was surprisingly windy, um, especially when the boat got up to speed. So I, you know, it was going pretty, pretty fast. It was about a three and a half hour cruise. And so you're gonna see a couple times in here where I actually had to flip my hat around backwards in order to uh, be able to make this work. But you know, if you ever get a chance, you gotta go do this. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever done in my life is going on one of these glacier cruises. And as you'll see coming up, we actually uh, made it up to within about a quarter mile of one of the big glaciers. And um, it, I can't tell you, uh, it won't do justice as to how big it was. And we it did see some of the ice calving into the water a few times. It, you know, we stuck around long enough to see some of that. Oh, there I am with the hat backwards. And uh, as you can see, I took on one of the Phillips cruises and tours when I was there and um, strongly recommend it. If you get a chance, you just got to go do this. Uh, we did see wildlife. There was uh, sea lions and um, saw some bald eagles while we were there. Um, you know, uh, a few other things. Now, one thing I will tell you earlier in the video, I was also showing some pictures from the Seward Highway as I was driving in. And that was one of the prettiest stretches of road I've ever driven on. Um, you know, I've been Northern California, I've been uh, north of Seattle, I've driven Northern Michigan, obviously, I've been up to Maine. Um, that roadway was really pretty. And so if you get a chance and you get a good weather day, uh, you might wanna take advantage of that. Uh, we spent a good amount of time just sitting here watching these sea lions. They stopped the boat and they let us all watch as the sea lions were doing their thing. So I'm going to go back and turn the music back on. So we'll continue this little virtual tour. Yes, that's a sea otter, not a sea lion, that's a sea otter. Once I started taking my selfie, almost everybody else on the boat started doing it too. <laughs>
first sign of uh, glacial ice that was floating in the bay. And there's the glacier. And I cannot tell you how huge it was. I think it was five, six hundred feet high right there in this space. Those waterfalls were huge. They even pulled the ice out of the bay because it's pure fresh ice water. Uh, and um, that's what they use for ice in the drinks on the boat, as well as to keep the beverages cold. A little bit of a close up to the glacier where you can see the blue coming through, which is fresh on the ice under all that pressure over the thousands of years, uh, which turns it into a visible blue color. That just shows you how much ice is in the bay. I think this was about as close as we got and um just wow that's all i can say just wow um one of the neatest things i've ever seen and and from here we could easily see when there was calving taking place with uh, parts of the glacier falling off into the bay You know, the one thing that I will say about my trip to Alaska, too, is that um, everywhere you looked, <laughs> every place you looked, it was just so pretty, just about everywhere. So, you know, if you get the chance, take advantage of it. It was actually state number 50 for me. It was my final state. That's why I went there on a solo trip, because uh, my wife knew I was closing in on turning 51 years old. And I had a birthday coming up and she said, why don't you go get that last state before you turn 51? And with everything that's happened this year, boy, am I glad she gave me that green light. Look at that. This is fascinating. Uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Look at this up here. This is an uh, inverted water jet right up here. Uh, see this? What happened was the water was coming down with such force that it actually went back up and went uh, above vertical for a minute. <laughs> so the water came down then shot up like a giant fire hose and then came down in these other parts. That's how fast the uh, glacier was melting because of the high heat at that time. Here's a natural waterfall for you. Oh, no, take a look at this. I think, yeah, that's where I caught a little bit of calving. That is when it fell into the water right there. Let me see if the previous picture was catching that too. Maybe not. <laughs> All right, let's 
keep driving. This is on the way back. There's a couple sea lions again. More waterfall for you. This was actually the second part of the glacier that we came into. Uh, they took us into two different bays to see two separate glaciers. Um, this is the second one. You know, it was so pretty there, but I have to tell you, if, if I could have been there when it wasn't so hazy and you could see the backdrop mountains even better, it would have been unbelievable. This is about when we started coming back into Whittier, and even as we were on our way back in, we went over on the uh, far side of the entry approach, and there was just walls of waterfalls. I must have seen a couple hundred waterfalls on this one trip. Oh, nesting birds, too. They were nesting right into the cliffs. A little hard to see, but they're there. There was a couple walls where there were just thousands of birds. That's actually the birds right up next to the waterfall. If I zoom in a bit, you can see. That's a rookery right there. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. It's a pretty cool shot. As you can see, it was uh, the base for one of the big cruise ships. I think it was one of the cruise ships that might have had one of the big coronavirus outbreaks. Uh, but obviously, that was way before then. Uh, they said, fascinating thing, this ship had more passengers than the number of people that lived in Whittier. <laughs> so the town where the cruise ship comes to park, uh, and people can actually take the train off the ship to go up to Anchorage uh, to do some exploration. But um, the ship had more people than the town, I believe. Here I'm back on the Seward Highway heading back toward Anchorage. And as you can see, um, I made this basically one big long day. It was just, you know, stop and explore. It was wonderful. Oh, uh, I believe that that little white dot is a mountain sheep. There were several people looking at those with um, binoculars. I have to bring mine on this trip. There was a ton of places where you could pull out also and just get down by the seashore. Um, all these little, it reminded me a lot of Northern California. That's what it reminded me of.
Now, on my way back into the city, uh, I was getting, um, you know, they had 20 hours of daylight, basically. Uh, it was starting to get a little bit later in the evening, and I noticed that as you were coming into Anchorage, they had the Coastal Wildlife Refuge, and you could park your cars. I don't believe it cost anything, and then you could go on um, some raised walkways out over this um, basically estuary area. Uh, and it's sort of an interesting story about it. They built the um, Great Alaskan Seward Railroad uh, that went down um, the coast. And when they built it, they built in this barrier to build the train tracks on. And without meaning to, they went right through what was a, a river outlet into the bay and it filled in with the sediments and turned into this wildlife refuge. And it's just an amazing place to get a chance. You wanna stop, uh, I will give you the one thing. <laughs> you can still see moose and bear even inside the city limits of Anchorage. Uh, didn't see any uh, moose or bear in when I was here, but I was definitely keeping my eyes open. As you can see, if you look deep into the background, that's some of the homes outside of Anchorage right there. So as you can see, it's coming right into the city limits. Not a bad view. Some of the native plants and um, animal trails, tons of animal trails through here. All right, might be hard to see, but that right there is a bald eagle. And it flew right over me as it was heading across the area. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's go back. It's a little hard to see, those are uh, salmon and a few trout uh, and as you're walking it was pretty amazing they they may not look like much those a lot of those were three feet long <laughs> they were huge so uh, and a lot of people were like uh, saying that some people uh, go out near that area to um, catch the fish oh wait here you go little video All right, so that was day one. Now let's go and talk about day two. Thank you for joining me for day 1.5 of my trip to Alaska. Come back tomorrow for days two and three, including my visit to Denali National Park. I will see you tomorrow.